saying all that to say healing justice and abolition are one and the same because we existed, black, indigenous, and people of color for a very long time without prison systems. We existed amongst one another with the legacy of interdependence and we used our ancient practices and intuitive wisdom, our alchemy, in order to address harm without having these systems in place. And we did so while also making sure that we held traditions sacred and we held the humanity of those around us sacred so that we could be sustained. And so when I say remembrance inside of abolition, remember the, the true legacy of black, indigenous, and people of color, which is that the storytelling, the art of storytelling, which was actually stolen from us by the oppressor, mm -hmm. right? We, we felt in this space, as folks were doing storytelling, they were telling their truths, they were speaking truths to power, that the toxic energy of the oppressor was still there because this work is vicarious traumatization. So we are, we are living the legacies that our oppressor has implanted into our history. And so healing justice is here to elevate, reaffirm, and centralize the true legacies, the legacies that we have been sustained by ritual, by interdependence, by practices of healing, by watching nature and plants and the animal life and understanding how we can continue to love one another and be with one another in a way that is holistic, interdependent, and sustaining. So I just wanted to make the connection around healing justice and abolition before Kian talks a little bit about why we're here and what we're going to offer. And part of our larger work at Harriet's Apothecary is supporting movements for justice, freedom, and liberation um, by integrating healing justice work into those larger work, into larger work for, um, for freedom. Um, and we do that by offering and curating, co-creating healing spaces and healing workshops um, that create opportunities for folks to invest and focus on both individual and collective healing, as so many folks have reflected earlier today already, uh, marginalized folks are often denied access to various forms of wellness, mental, emotional, spiritual wellness. And so we believe that it is integral to all of our, um, all of our movement and practices um, to really integrate our, um, our well-being. So we really do try to create those um, opportunities and spaces today uh, we have a healing space at the Bristol Community College on a lower level. We will be offering various activities and exercises um, centering personal, individual, and collective healing. I'm also offering a workshop at 3.30 p.m. in the lower level of Bristol Community College. And the workshop will use movement and storytelling and reflective writing um, as catalysts for personal and collective transformation. Um, and I invite all black and indigenous folks to join me for this workshop later today at 3.30. And tomorrow at 8.45 a.m., we'll be offering a healing justice workshop just to talk more about what we mean by healing justice and why it's really central and important to larger movements for abolition, uh, freedom, and liberation. And that will be at the, I might need some help with this, the Nathan and Mary Polly Johnson House. Um, so I hope you'll be able to join us for that tomorrow morning as well. Thank you so much.